Mm-mm-mm. Ezekiel Elliott telling reporters, quote, when we want him referring to the possibility of the Cowboys landing OBJ. Also, Nate Davis of USA Today ranked 13 teams where OBJ could land. Number one, Skip's Cowboys. Davis writing, quote, Beckham is obviously a luminary who could shine brightly as part of the America's team mythology and might just be the guy who finally puts a title-starved franchise over the top. All right, Shannon, yesterday you gave the OBJ to Dallas scenario a 10% chance. Does this change your mind? Absolutely not, because Zeke doesn't own the Cowboys. And Zeke, I don't see Zeke naming the bottom right of that check. (laughs) When they they put that, excuse me, at the top left, Dallas Cowboys Incorporated. Skip, look, what's Zeke supposed to say? I think there are a lot of guys that would love to have Zeke on their team. Skip, remember, Von Miller was doing doing IG Live every day, Had had OBJ on it. And we were doing that like, what, what's the chances? I'm like, it ain't no guarantee he going to Buffalo. If there's no skip, here's the thing: it's called supply and, and demand. By the way, Vaughn was booking it, man. Booking it, yeah. booking. He's yeah. coming here. All right. It's called supply and demand. Yeah. There's a huge demand for OBJ services, but the problem is, is the supply. There's only one of him. So anytime you get supply and demand, what you get, Skip? You get into a bidding situation. Now the Cowboys have 6.9 million left. Now, OBJ says, I'm tired of, I've done the rock and roll thing, which means living out of suitcase, mm-hmm. doing the one-year deals. Yep. I want something a little more long-term. Mm-hmm. I want something a little bit more concrete. He wants to buy a home, he says. Yeah. Drop now, roots. Here's the thing, though. Now, he wants at least, at least a two-year deal, possibly three. Guess who's coming up for contracts? Trayvon Diggs. He's a second-round pick. He's, in, he's finishing up his third year, heading into the fourth. You might want to do something. What about your guy to receiver, Skip? He's finishing up his third year, heading into his fourth year when they normally give these extensions. So you got two young dogs that you drafted that you definitely want to hold on to, and they're not coming cheap. Trayvon Diggs going to want, ooh, he going to want that J. Ram money. He going to want that Xavier Howard money. And by the way, 11 from heaven is going to want to <laughs> he, just break the bank. He next year. Yeah. So whatever they gave Miles Garrett, whatever they gave uh, 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 T.J. Watt. Yep. Add another $35, $40 million on top of that. And he will be worth it. <laughs> he going to go get it. So, Skip, that's, that, that's the problem that I see the Cowboys having. Yes, they want his services. Yes, I believe they can use his services. But when the supply is limited and the demand is high, value rises. Look at that Jerry Jen like El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> You, you what know, he said to Randy Gregory, <laughs> El Paso, as in I pass. I pass. Yeah. And so, Skip, we might be headed down to a situation like that. And then guess what? In 2023, guess who that kind of got cap here? A 42 mil. Yo, guy. Dakota Rain Prescott. And that cap here about to rain on your parade. It is. <laughs> so, when I look at it, Skip, I just don't see OBJ interested. He's not going to give you what he gave the Rams. Remember, Skip, he signed that minimum contract, had it had uh, incentives. If we win this game, win the playoff game, win the a- a- NFC, win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't see him doing a deal like that, giving the Cowboys the discount that he gave the uh, 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 the Rams. And so for that, Skip, no, I, my 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 um my percentages have not gone up as far as him going to the Cowboys. Mm. Shannon Sharp. On this day, I'm not going to let you rain on my parade <laughs> because my parade that I'm throwing right now is for Odell coming to Dallas and dropping anchor. If he wants to live in Highland Park, down the street from Jerry Jones, big old mansion, he can. It's a good place to live. Troy Eggman lives there. It's a great place to but live. But that, that is not close to the there for a long time. That's not close to the facility. Don't you no. want to get close to the facility? Well, don't you want to live where, where the, the, <laughs> no. the rich people no, or the pseudo wealthy no, people? No, I'm not, Skip. I'm not. Look, I'm trying to roll out of bed. I'm not trying to beat out doing all that traffic. Highland Park is not close to uh, the Frisco <laughs> no, where they train not. at. <laughs> Maybe you can build a helicopter deck above <laughs> your mansion and do what Jerry does. He just copters. Nah. Right? Nah. Okay. Mm-mm. You can do whatever you want in Dallas, you could, Texas. You, you could. All right, you did chuckle. I, I heard you chuckle during Jen's read in which she read Nate Davis's last line, and I was impressed that he, he's got 13 teams on this list, and he made strong cases for all 13. But when he got to number one, it was that team. It was America's team. And that final line I'm going to read one more time. Beckham is obviously a luminary, yes. is he ever, who could shine brightly as part of the America's team mythology. Mythology. 
and might just be the guy who finally puts a title star franchise over the top. Okay, I, I buy the back into this, but that word mythology, that means it's mythological. That means it's a myth. That means it didn't really happen, right? right? And maybe that's the perfect word for what hasn't been happening in Dallas because it has been 27 years since my football team even played in an NFC championship game. Yes. 27 years since I wrote my last Cowboy book called Hell Bent about that final season in which they got your man prime, Deion Sanders, to come <laughs> and tilt the playing field back in their direction. Correct. And in spite of themselves, that team had all kinds of internal issues. They but did. in spite of themselves, they were just so talented that they, they just went out and – toyed with Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl. It was Neil O'Donnell at quarterback. Yes. But they toyed, and, and Larry Brown, my guy, Larry Brown, was Got the me. MVP just because Neil O'Donnell kept throwing it to Larry Brown. No, uh, uh, Neil O'Donnell was the MVP. <laughs> he got, yeah, well, he, he should have been. Okay. He got Larry, uh, Larry it's Brown been paid. 27 years of that. He has. And now here we are again at the crossroads, six and two. We got two big away games. We should beat Aaron Rodgers or what's left of him. We're about to discuss that. And then it's your man, Kirk Cousins, and Dallas has owned Kirk Cousins. He's two and eight against my Cowboys. My backup quarterbacks have beaten him in back to back years up at his place. So now if we could go take care of that business, no. maybe Odell's head would keep turning, turning, turning toward. Dallas, Texas. Well, maybe he should go join the Vikings then. Mm. <laughs> I, mean, the Vikings I, mean, do I don't think they're even on this list. I might have missed them, but I, I don't believe they are. You glad. Okay. Buffalo is number two. And by the way, uh -huh. the, the Rams are still at three on this list wow. of Nate Davises. And for the longest, we both thought, well, that's just a done deal. Because speaking of building a house somewhere, well, he's already he built got one out here in Los <laughs> Angeles. And the, but the thing is, Skip, is that I think everybody will say Robinson has been a major disappointment. Sean, uh, Sean Jefferson, Van Jefferson. Yep. The first play of the grade, uh, uh, Matthew Stafford hit him on a deep over route. Perfect. Hit dropped him right between the numbers. He did. And he dropped, dropped it. it. Well, he hadn't been playing. And then, yep. and then I see him limping, so the knee is not, he doesn't feel, he doesn't have the confidence in that knee yet. Odell, I mean, obviously he's going to have to get his conditioning back, Skip. And then how confident is he in, in his situation dealing with the knee? Is he going to wear a knee brace or is he going to go out there, you know, just wear a knee sleeve? Okay. So that's going to be very interesting. And I can't answer that. You can't answer that. No. I'm not sure Odell can answer no. that at this moment. But I got to tell you, I, you know how closely well, we both watch Chris Godwin. He just doesn't look right no. to me because no. he was complete reconstruction of that ACL. And maybe he pushed it a little bit yeah. to get back because that happened in that New Orleans game, which was, I think, December 13th. Right. So it was, he was pushing the calendar. I, I think the thing is, not skip, everybody's trying to run up, run up, one up Adrian Peterson. Yep. They saw him tear his knee in late December, and then he followed it up with all, one of the all-time great rushing seasons. He finished six yards, seven, eight yards short of the rushing type, of the rushing record set by Eric Dixon in 2105. He had 2097, won the MVP. And so everybody's like, will you say how AP? Skip, that's an anomaly. For a guy to have a surgery that serious and to come back and do, he looked better then than he had ever looked prior to the surgery. Okay, and then he followed that he, up. He's, the he's a freak. But he's the all-time weight room yeah. warrior. So whatever rehab had to be done, he went and attacked it. He, went, he was 110% over yes. what they were asking. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so I don't know his health and I don't know his emotions. And I'll never forget just last year when this was all happening, pretty close to this time, I guess, a year yeah. ago. Our friend Lil Wayne is pretty close with Odell, and I talked to Lil Wayne one afternoon. He said, I just got off the phone with Odell, and he said he's narrowed it down to New Orleans, where obviously he's right. from, and Green Bay. Right. And I, I'm kind of taking that to my bank, thinking, well, okay, and, and it's, it's a close call. Right. Which way do you want to go? And then a bolt out of the blue comes the next day, which shocked Wayne for sure. Wait, the Rams? They came out of nowhere. Right. And because of his connection here, because he has a house here for the, right. the, the off-seasons, right. he just said, why not? And I also think he didn't want to go be somebody's savior, and he knew Cooper Cup is the guy, right. so I can just slide in there as the number three, and then Robert Woods tears up his knee the day he walks in the door. Right, and I think the thing is, it was a great situation for him, Skip. Look, Taysom Hill or Trevor no, Simeon or whomever, yeah, uh, I got that it. situation. Yeah. Skip, that, that's not an ideal situation. So I really never thought New Orleans was really in play. Green Bay, I can see that. But, man, man, catching balls, I understand catching balls from Aaron Rodgers, that's great. That's unbelievable. But, man, in 20 degrees, no, that's no fun. That is Let me catch balls from Matt Stafford in 72. Okay, so I'm going to restate my case. And this will require some America's team discount. But to me, there are ideas that I hear 
and my mind just leaps to a conclusion of, yeah, that's correct. That works. That fits. That's right. And when I heard Odell to Dallas, I hadn't thought about it. It fits for me because he was born to end up his career as a Dallas Cowboy because he launched his career against the Dallas Cowboys, if we could see the catch again. Yeah. Who will ever forget this? This put Odell on the international map, on the social media map, and it wouldn't have mattered as much if it had been against Jacksonville or who knows, any – but what a catch that was. Greatest catch ever. I'm not going to debate that. Against Brandon Hughes' car (laughs) in in a game my Cowboys – rallied to win on Sunday night football. But all anybody talked about on Monday was that Chris Collinsworth had immediately proclaimed it the greatest catch ever, and nobody disagreed. And Odell became a superstar off that one moment against that team on that stage. Right. So now he he needs to, to play the palace that is Dallas. He was in New York. Obviously, unfortunately, he was in Cleveland. But he he did New York and he did L.A., the center of the NFL universe is Dallas, Texas. I don't care what you say. They're the most valuable franchise in all of sports, in the world of sports. And they are by far the most watched team because the top five ratings, and we're hoping for a big one here at Fox this Sunday at Green Bay, yeah. the top five will always belong to the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Everybody loves them. Everybody hates them. Whatever it is, they, they are magnetized for viewers. Right. And I know we talk about them a lot on this show, but people want to hear about them because everybody's got an opinion about the Dallas Cowboys. Well, Odell belongs in the middle of that. He, as Jerry said, he belongs with that. He looked pretty good with that star in his helmet. You say, you say Buffalo is number two, right? Yep. Who's number three? Rams. Okay. Rams. If I'm Buffalo, if I'm the Rams, all I do is I put together me a little montage, a little clip, and I played Odell. This is what Skip Bayless, the number one Cowboy fan, this is what he said about you. Oh, Okay. What, what I used to say? No, 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 no. no. You no, said okay, that earlier okay, but I, You didn't let me finish. Okay. I don't even care what he does on the field. No, no. I'm talking about just the aura, <laughs> the mystique of having Odell. It sends a message to my locker room. We're serious about this. We got this because oh. he was a Super Bowl catalyst last yeah. year. It didn't happen with the eight games he played in the regular season because I was just spitting facts over here. He averaged three catches and 34 yards a game for eight straight games. He was non-existent. He was almost irrelevant in the Rams' offense until the game at Tampa. Well, you see him, he caught a touchdown against uh, Arizona, then caught a, then, then did a number on Tampa, and did a number on free, uh, and the Niners. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he did a number on them, but... He did a number on, ta- he did a number on Tampa. Tampa, he was 9 for 113, mm-hmm. okay? But Cooper Cup is also doing a number, and so he can just play in the shadows. But see, they were worried about doing Odell late, and okay. they forgot about Cook. okay. If Odell comes to Dallas and catches three balls for 34 yards a game, I'm happy now, because it's like we got Odell and you don't. You should not be rewarded for your behavior towards OBJ okay. for the last two All years. Right. Well, I, I do think he has been overrated as a Is number he, one receiver. But he, he's no longer a number one. You hear what he's saying? Okay, well, he can just slide right in the door because we got a guy you call C.D. Dam that I do still call C.D. Lamb, yeah. as in Lamb who turns into a lion with the when? football under his arm. When he catches it. Yeah, when he catches it, he does. But it's a sweet spot for Odell to come in as the number – you know, you can be a 1A, you can be a number two. He's the man. And, again, they use tight ends a lot. You, you won't be expected to be the savior. If you go to Kansas City, I don't even know where Ooh. Kansas City was on this list, but if you go there, people are going to say, oh, they got the new Tyreek. No, 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 Good no, no. Luck. The savior's already there. He mm-hmm. won five. Yeah. That's the savior. Yeah. Odell, you got to give us a little bit we'll of an America's team discount. I'm trying to buy a house. Yeah. Well, i tell you what. 